Oh, again, great, ladies and gentlemen, it's Greg here again with the unboxing of the, uh, the kit that I wouldn't normally buy. I just thought it was look quite nice, and the price was twenty quid for it, so I thought, why not? What time I did something slightly different, and it's the German eight-ton semi-truck, twenty millimeter flak veiling, SDKF Z71. Uh, it's an old kit, but you got uh, it's quite a nice-looking beastie. So it's an old Tamiya kit. I can't, I don't know if it's got the, I think it may be just a re release. I'm 100% sure. The kit number is, there we are, 35050, two stars, 2800. Um, that's America, Tamiya America. And just the same, the uh, artwork is quite nice again. Same typical artwork for Tamiya. But uh, really nice. That's on both ends, obviously. And on the side of the old, because because it's an old kit, they used to advertise their uh, their kits in their range. So there we have the uh, Panzer Three, the Panther, the Matilda, the Russian. It looks like a KV One, yeah, KV One, and the M10 tank destroyer. So these are the original ones. Obviously, a lot of these have been re-released since these. Uh, this was boxed. So without further ado, we shall do what I normally do. We'll open the box and see what we've got inside. So yeah, I've just had a quick glance. Nothing else. We'll have a, we'll have a little gander. So I'll put that down there. Well, you can see the box is quite... Uh, stick it on there. The box is quite full. Let me just drop this down slightly. The box is quite full of plastic. There was just one piece that wasn't in plastic, which I found was a bit strange. Is basically the uh, the chassis. So we'll start with the chassis first. Just move these things back. I've got that much crap on my desk with this diorama business I'm doing. I should really tidy things up. Right, think from there like that. So, so we'll start off with this first. We'll bring this down slightly and this further in towards the camera. So this is the basically the chassis. It seems to be in sort of one part. So there's a bit of a uh, this is the underneath. We've got a bit of detail on the underneath. I zoom this is the uh, part of the engine. Transmission. I would presume I don't really know I'm not really clued up on things like this. But it's, it's nicely detailed. You know you're not going to see it underneath. And it's like it's an unusual grey for to me, yeah. No, oh, it's an unusual gear. Let's see if there's any date on this. I think it says 1972. If you can, I don't think the camera can pick that up, can it? No, it's in the shadow. It's in a. It's in a. Uh, Yeah, but the same, it's quite nice. It's, it seems to be, it seems to be uh, square. It doesn't seem to be warped. But it definitely says 1972. So it just shows you all the kit is. I was eight or seven when this was uh, when this was originally released. So well, yeah, so that's a nice, a nice, a nice start to it. We'll just open the sprue by, sorry, bag by bag as normal. That down now. And we'll start with this screw next. There's my knife, unorganised as normal. Right. Oh, to me, so be careful. Watch the, uh, watch the staples. Little buggers can get everywhere and they're dangerous, they might pop off. So just be careful. So we have two screws in here, one of the same grey. And um, we have a netting again, I presume that's for the it looks like for the outside of the uh, the vehicle round the back of the uh, the gun is. So it's typical to me of stuff, it's not too good stuff. As soon as you start cutting it starts to fray. But uh, we shall use it because I don't have any other option at the moment. And then the uh, we have all five figures. 
which are Tamiya's, which is obviously a Tamiya, and the detail, I have to say, for a 1972 kit is not bad at all. And there's, uh, they're not that bad at all. Faces could be a bit nicer, but you know, can't have everything. There's a couple of bit of tarp up there, there's the uh, shovels and the, the uh, rifles, and the daggers, the water bottles, binoculars. I don't know what they are. Some to, uh, it could be the, uh, yeah, looks like the, uh, it could be the ammunition boxes. And we have a commander figure in one, I presume is the commander figure. Again, they're not bad considering the age. Obviously things have moved along since these were uh, are done, but they'll be used. They certainly will be used. So, so we have all the helmets as well. And there's the tarp and the gas masks as well. A couple of pouches. So, you know, they're fairly well equipped. They're fairly well equipped. And then obviously we back to the grey sprues. Yep, and this is sprue C and this says it was made in 1975. If you can probably read that one on there. Yeah, I can read that. Yes, I say it's a strange plastic for Tamiya, but uh, I've never, never seen a plastic like this for Tamiya, from with Tamiya. So we have the inside of the back of the half track, which has got that nice checkerboard type effect. The uh, it's really nice, actually. I must admit that is really nice. And we have some I presume their engine covers. I would presume, and then we have a little bit of the uh, checkerboard effect again, or the on the, towards the wheel arches, the rear of the tank. Tank. I mean, rear of the. Uh, the half track um, looks like a canvas piece for the rear of the uh, thing, obviously to uh, cover it up when it's uh, raining or snowing or whatever. Snowing in this case when it's not being used. That's quite nice actually, considering the age. It's got a nice effect, which obviously will bring out more when you uh, wash it and things and. Add your highlights and lower lights and everything else. The pick, I'm not sure what parts of these are. I think these are the sides that drop down for when the gun is in, in uh, action. There's two of those. There's the shovels, like muck guards, again, again. And I don't know if they're fuel drums or, sorry, if you, uh, I don't know what they are. I'm not too sure it could be more of the floor, I presume. But we'll see when we get to the instructions. But yeah, nice plastic. So you keep half an hour about the plastic. I've never seen the plastic like uh, keep going on. I've never seen it like that. That seems to be nice. And then uh, we have another another sprue. Well, I've got a couple of sprues in this bag, which is uh, about the majority of the uh, the gun. It's, yeah. yeah, so it's nicely detailed again. Let's see what year this was manufactured. 75 again. So we have a lot of the uh, yeah. the guns. Apparently, I was talking to Steve, and you can get an update uh, the metal barrels for it. So we shall have a look out for those. But these aren't too bad. I know they're not drilled out at the ends, but it wouldn't take too much of an effort to drill them out because they're quite thick. But we'll see how much the uh, aftermarket ones are. But again the detail is really quite nice for dull kit. There's nothing wrong with that detail at all. And I say I've seen no flash and I've seen no ugly uh, injection marks where they shouldn't be. What injection marks are are on the rear. But you're not going to see most of these. So it's quite nice. And again we have uh, these look like they're ammunition that goes on the top of the guns. When they're, in, when they're in action, they're a bit basic, but we could do something with those, couldn't we? Really? I'll have a look at those, see what I can do with them when I get around to building this. 
I presume we have more of the gun carriage, sort of the, uh, the stand and all goes on too. And again the detail is quite nice again and all the injection marks are on the back where you're not going to see them. Uh, yeah, let's see a little hatch, I think I don't know what they're hatch covers or a shoe, but they're nice. The detail for a 1975 but it's not bad at all. In fact I have to say I've seen uh, newer kits with less detail. So there's still quite a lot of plastic in here to go with. One bit, another big sprue here, which is uh, it looks like a part of the, uh, the main cab of the vehicle, the suspension uh, and the engine and things like that. By looking at this sprue, and again, this is made in 1970. I think it's 73. This one, so this is about 72, 73, and 75, if my eyesight is correct. So that looks like that's the inside of the cab, pretty basic, but obviously there's things to add to that. And there, that's the engine, so the uh, cover for the for the bonnet or hood if you're American. That's the front of it again. I think that's the hood. Sorry, the bonnet. I think these might be on the side from there. Sorry, it's my my fault. And we have some more sort of. Uh, Parts of the uh, front as well, I would have thought. And you see, the detail is, is pretty good again. And we have, I think there must be extra fuel. Let's turn it around. I think there must be extra fuel uh, drums, I presume. I'm not 100% sure. And then we have, I just spotted that beside the fuel drums. We have, that seems to be the, uh, the inside, the uh, dashboard. Hopefully, we can uh, make that look nice. Get the old geek goggles on to see that. Jail again, then the suspension for the uh, half track leaf spring again, but the detail is really quite nice again. And no flow flash. So on the rear side, we have the injection marks, but you're not going to see those. That's going to be flush against the uh, the chassis at the back. I don't know what all them parts are, I wouldn't have a clue. There's six of them anyhow, so it must be something to do with the suspension. And it looks like we have the uh, drive shaft there, which is quite nice again, it's nicely detailed. Interesting build this. I think there possibly could be the, uh, yeah, they're the bogies. Sorry, that's the bogies, isn't it? Let's have hastened to the uh, leaf springs, so there's two wheels on each bogey. And then we have someone that's alien to, uh, to a certain gentleman who I won't say his name, but that piece there, that round piece there, he uh, doesn't know what that's for. <coughs> Less. But, uh, yeah, not a bad kit at all. A lot of small details there again, it's like a little hook of some description. And I'll give you 20 quid for this at all. It was a lovely little kit. I don't know, I just thought it was draw, drew me to it because I thought hmm, I've never done anything like that. I have the old Hannah Mag, but I've never even built that. But I thought this looks a nice little build. And the last of the plastic we have, which is even better as well considering the age. I don't think they'll be in there. We have a number of polycaps, and I think they're the ends of the, uh, the hubs for the wheels. Which are polycaps as well. There's a few, no, they're not. Yeah, there's a few polycaps, and there's a few, you know, the ends of the. Uh, let me just bring this back over here a little bit, a bit of light, maybe. There we go. See the ends there. Got that stuff like a little nipple on there, much like grease nipples, I presume. Like that. So that was a bit of a surprise. I wouldn't have thought them kind of things would be in there. Uh, decals. There's quite a few obviously for different uh, the number plates and different uh, divisions and companies and they're all, they're all quite shiny but there's not that much uh, film around them at all. Maybe it's like on the thick side but I've never had, really had a problem with any to my decals really. 
So I use the I don't use the mark if it's strong. I just use the uh, I can't remember what it's bloody called now. Blimey heck! The hell is it called? My memory is terrible. Really, really bad my memory. Help me in! Help! 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 Here we are. It's the micro micro set and micro. Microsoft, bloody hell. Terrible. So yeah, so that's what I use. And I say I've never had a problem with the decals at all from Tamiya. So there's a few of those obviously uh if you look at those markings there for the uh for the figures. We have you know for the fair mark and I don't know what they can't quite make out, that's obviously the one with the swash stick of the SS. Um and other divisions there, and obviously the number plates for the vehicle. So there's plenty of options. And then we'll have a look at the last bit of plastic, which is the uh, the wheels and sprockets and return roller, so return wheel, which are not bad at all. Consider the age of the kit again. They're quite nicely detailed, them. Oh, really nice. So there's uh, quite a few wheels to go on. I think they must put the outside where the outside and then we have the inside which we've just looked at. There's a nice bit of detail on those. A few little nuts in the inside. And then we have sprocket at the end there. It's just got a solid sprocket isn't it really? The teeth are quite rounded. And then there's the return wheel there. Turn idler. Yet again nothing wrong with those at all nothing at all in fact there's no injection marks on the rear of those that's all apart from the, uh, the flap part at the end there it's only two I can see oh. so that's the end of the plastic and then we can go to the uh, we'll go to the decals now so it decals the uh, destructions uh, they'll be typical to me a decals. That's all we have and we've got the tracks to go on with before we do the decals. My apologies. Uh, to me they are typical rubber band tracks. I presume these are the ones that we have to uh, use the hot, hot knife or whatever we call it. I presume. Uh, go over the top of there does it? Or... Yeah, fits in like that. That's yeah, so a little bad detail actually, quite nice and quite uh, deep. And there's no injection marks on the front at all, and on the rear, none at all again. A bit sparse on the inside, but that's to be expected. But on the front, uh, quite nice detail. So they're quite chunky, them, and oh, they're really for a half track. Really quite nice. So there's obviously two of those. They're like a silvery, you know, they're not like a normal black, they're like a silvery colour as well. But yeah, so there should be so that. I see. That fits in there like so. Right. So that's alright then, we know where they are. Which I'll probably use them, there's nothing wrong with them at all. Absolutely nothing. We nearly forgot about these, didn't we? And we have the road wheels. And there's a couple of, uh, I think, bit of metal parts for the axles, I would presume that's what they're for. And a piece of clear pliable perspex, which we won't take out the back, presumably for the window screen. So that's it, it's slightly pliable, so you can bend it to the shape of the. Uh, the window screen and then we have the wheels which are quite solid not right rubber there's a big seam line around them I think which we'll have to look at and address that but they're not bad, bad. I know they're not flat on the uh, uh, bulge on them but there's nothing to uh, try and flatten about just flatten it slightly at the bottom is there when we get when it's all set up the detail isn't bad it's not brilliant but it's not bad, so they're quite 
they are playable but they're quite hard see if there's an ugly seam line all the way around so we'll have to see if I can obviously we can disguise some of it with the uh, dirt and dust and some of it will be under the uh, mud guards but I'd like to try and get most of that out if possible take a bit of work but we can do that I uh, will take these out of the bag we have a nut and bolt and two two metal bars presumably for the axle for the front and probably for the uh, sprocket in the rear or the uh, idler whichever so and quite a lot of plastic there for for 20 quid so it's uh, an old kit but I'll say I'm quite impressed you know, it's it's not uh, sort of up to today's standards with the uh, certain parts but can't knock it at all. I'm not snob anyhow. So we have two instruction shet, shet sets. We have the one that I'll never use, which is written in uh, Japanese, and then we have the one in English. The German 8 ton semi track 20mm Flak Veling SDKFZ71. And obviously, there's a bit of history about it, which I'll have a read of that later on actually. I often have a little read when I'm. Uh, I don't know much about the vehicle, so there's a little bit of history on there. I'm sure you can find this on the uh, internet, you know, on Wikipedia or somewhere similar. So that's the, you know, it's typical to me here. Uh, deco, uh, deco, destruction sheet, nice, clear, and concise. As you can see, we're starting off with the uh, construction of the uh, pedestal, obviously for the gun. And then we're going on again, adding most of the pedestal, and then we're starting to add the uh, the barrels. So I'm going to have to have a look, see what the if I can drill a hole out that make them look decent, or do I get the metal ones? I'm not too sure. I don't. I don't know. Depends on how. If Father Christmas is nice to me, and so as I just down here tells you, uh, don't it says on the side number one. Do not forget to put E3 between E27 and E28. E13 should resolve and must revolve. Oh, sorry, I can't read now. Revolve and must not be cemented to them. So obviously that's for the uh, mechanism for the guns. So you're not um, so they won't move. So I like this. I like this idea. It's good that they the short. They actually a bit of in depth telling you why. Why such and such a part isn't glued? And then we start on to uh, number five, and there again we have all the information down the uh, down that left-hand channel again, which is pretty good at assembling the gun again, fixing the man the machine gun barrels and and the base, and then we have the shield, and then we start the installation of the sprocket wheels on the uh, on the lower hull. It's all on the chassis, I should say. But I still, it's pretty good. And it says it's a bit unusual there. You have to use a hot screwdriver for a part there to uh, seal it. But it tells you why. That's pretty good. I do like that. I do like it. it gives you sort of some explanation of what you're doing it and why you're doing it. And then we're concentrating on the lower lower chassis again, putting the uh, exhaust on there and fuel drums and the leaf springs and the oh yes the wheels yeah yeah it's a winch winch wheel sorry I see I couldn't last be near the front obviously yeah and then we start with the, the again more under the chassis boxing things in there's the metal bar like I thought with the uh, return roller or return wheel Again, and then we're starting to put the uh, front axle together, and then the wheels onto that. The rubber tyres, well, probably won't, well, probably won't do that straight away. I'll have to paint the uh, the inside of the wheel before I attempt doing the rubber on the tyres. If it depends on how how neat I can get the uh, seam line out. But generally speaking, it's it's typical to me. It should fall together. The fit should be no problem at all. And then we installation of the road wheels. Again, they're slightly interleaved. Well, they are interleaved again. There seems to be three 
two uh, one double and two single wheels on each uh, on each bogey, apart from the last one where there's just is there three in? Yeah, there's three on that one as well. Yeah. Yeah, the front suspension is obviously well, that's, up, that's all apart with on part 10 is now fitted onto the uh, lower chassis. Uh, I'm not too sure if I'd do that. Depends on how for, what I'm going to do with the underneath. Am I going to detail the underneath? Am I going to put the depending on what the engine looks like and parts like that? I know most of it will be in case, so you're not going to really see it. But I'm going to have to do something underneath there. And then we're starting with the inside of the cab, um, the driver's seat, and then obviously the uh, gear sticks and bits and pieces again it's giving you the colour call out as you're going along with the, uh, the dashboard obviously the seats and the interior of the uh, of the cab and I like that on number 12 it says rear seat differs accordingly as the vehicle is, is in is fighting or running see rear seat differs according as the vehicle is fighting or running. In fighting the rear seat is folded up so that the machine gun can be swivelled. I see. Right, so that's something you'll have to look out for when we uh, whatever pause you're going to do it in. I'm quite deaf and then we're on part 13 again so we have the cab which is partly there and then we have the window screen as I showed you before then the window frame with the uh, the screen wipers built in and then we put the bonnet hood whatever you want to call it onto the front and as I thought these uh, these are the uh, the sides of the, the sides of the vehicle where we are that's what the netting's for so these will be laying flat if your um, if the gun is going to be in, in action I presume that up if it's on transport mode and there we have that cab there for the uh, Canvas cover for the uh, for the cab, and then again it said about fixing the gates. Each gate is fixed differently according to the vehicle is fighting or running. In running, each gate should be erected. Yeah, so I thought it should be it laying flat when it's going to be used or or up to the uh, horizontal position when not being used. Yeah, fixing the driver's seat. C6 is movable and should. Should be put just in. All oh, right. I do like this. I really do like these little figures at the sides. And I don't know why a lot, a lot of uh, kids, including to me, have stopped doing it. It's really quite. You know, you know what you're doing. So I just point a few arrows, but actually telling you what you should be doing. I do like. And then we start with the uh, of the figures. All the parts for the figures and each position and pose for each soldier. And then we're starting to finish it off now by putting the lower hull, sorry, the chassis and the upper hull to the uh, together. A few bits and pieces on the front there, which is uh, construction of the front front body, so it's headlights and uh, yeah, headlights and wing mirrors. And then we are attaching the actual main gun on there as well on the rear. And that's figure 18 and that should be the complete build, a build of it done. It is indeed and then we've got a colour call out for and see what it's like. Right. In applying decals, see the left table and select one kind of set of decals, Wehrmacht, Waffer and SS or Luftwaffe. So it's matte wave, so it looks like I'm be doing the uh, hairspray technique probably on this. Yeah, it's presumably it'll be grey underneath as most German vehicles were at the time. I'll have to look into that first. Yeah, metallic grey, divisional, yeah, grey of some description. And obviously, that tells you where the figures are fitted and ready to go. We have the loader. Well, it says there the right loader, the tracker, the commander, the ammunition boxes as I thought they were, the carrier, the left loader, water bottles, everything else, and the rifles all must be uh, used. And then we have the colour call out for the winter camouflage again for the commander, giving you the, uh, the colours. 
again that's really nice and then there about all the divisional markings again there's quite a few options it's nicer off obviously we'll have to decide at the beginning which uh, which of the figures are going to be I'll probably just use them either I think I might just use them as a Luftwaffe I think I change my mind when I get to it but generally speaking what a cracking little kit for 20 quid mm, brilliant so that's another one in the uh, to the collection but that many I wish these bloody kit manufacturers would stop bringing these kits out and tempt people to buy them it's terrible <laughs> Right, so I'll say thank you very much to all my subscribers and to all my old subscribers as well and the new ones for uh, sticking with me. Um, I'll have a, another update of the uh, T3476 diorama very, very shortly. Uh, that's coming along quite nicely now, so we're almost getting to the point of adding the tank again to it and finishing it off. But we're not quite there yet, but not far off. So this is... Uh, Greg signing off and we'll catch you again very soon.